today I'm going to introduce you to Matt Press. He's the Director of the Office of Building Commissioner and he's going to share with us some of the work that he's doing to implement the Construct New South Wales Construction Reform Program. So Matt, uh, the work we've got to do won't be achieved overnight. Do you want to just talk us through that? So I've got, I've got three horizons of, in our strategy, David. The first horizon is about getting confidence back in the market. There we're focusing on the accreditation regime, making sure that there's registered designers producing designs for builders to work from. The second, the second horizon is about getting insurers back into the game, giving them the confidence that they can ensure the work that's been constructed and ensure the practitioners doing that work. And the third horizon is about decennial liability insurance, having a first resort scheme that provides 10 year coverage for defects for consumers. Matt, everybody has been hearing about the six pillars strategy. At times, they don't fully understand what all the moving pieces are about. Why don't you just briefly walk the viewers through that strategy? David, it's an amazing strategy. There's six pillars, but as you, as you get to understand them more, you'll see they're all interconnected. So stepping through one by one, the first pillar is about legislation. It's about making sure that the rules of the game that are there for the designers and builders and any other practitioners really put the customer at the centre. Our, our key focus there, David, is the Design and Building Practitioners Act and the Residential Apartment Buildings Compliance and Enforcement Act. Two very new pieces of legislation that put the focus back on the customer. The second pillar is about ratings. We know that information is power and so this, this pillar is all about providing information on the trustworthiness and the riskiness of players. We're going to be working with industry to develop ratings tools so that the regulator, the consumers, the insurers, the bankers can understand where are the risks in the market, who are the players that they should avoid and who are the players that they should want to do business with. Ultimately, Pillar 3 is about filling in the gaps that exist today and building that momentum as we go forward so that we have a future uh, ready workforce um, in the next 10 years. The other uh, pillars are also very interesting, but maybe if you could, for now, just touch on them very lightly. Pillar 4 is about contracts and standards, making sure the contracts that exist between builders and designers reflect the requirements coming under the legislative reforms before us today. Um, they're also about making sure that the standards um, that people work to are fit for purpose um, and giving them a real look over as well, particularly in the context of the new legislation. Pillar 5 is about digital capabilities. It's about having digital platforms to support both the regulator and the industry itself. Digital platforms that make it easy to analyse information and make quality decisions. Pillar 6 is about data. Um, a lot of conversations historically have been driven about opinions and Pillar 6 is about making sure that there's data underpinning decisions and conversations. So that's for us about commissioning new research to understand what's really going on in the sector so we can use that data to decide what to do about it. So Matt, we've uh, been talking about risk uh, tools to actually help the regulator in the future. What are the sorts of initiatives you've got st standing up now? We've got a great initiative coming forward, David. It's going to build uh, a new digital platform within the regulator that will bring through all the different data sets it has on practitioners and consolidate that into a single view of customer. We know in the building construction sector there's a whole range of different players, large and small, but also risky and less risky. So Matt, what you're saying is that we're creating a future where the greater effort will be on the most risky players and the more trustworthy players will see the regulator less often. That's important because our, our end game here, David, is to get to a place where New South Wales could have decennial liability in place as a voluntary insurance product. That would be a fantastic win for consumers. It exists elsewhere and it provides a first resort 10-year insurance scheme for key building defects. As we move into the next year, of course, we're going to have 2022 in our mind. What are the big features of 2022? 2022 is our date with destiny. David, that's the date we want to be having a strong conversation about what does the regulator look like. Um, all of this work that we're doing across the six pillars is to have a regulator in New South Wales that is more impactful, more proactive and really delivering great outcomes for the consumers of New South Wales. We want it to be fostering and supporting a building and construction sector that believes in quality, that it wants to produce in quality buildings that can last for years to come. Matt, it's, uh, it's not all about digital, it's about 
new capabilities. Can you give us an example of how new capabilities will come to the regulator? Yeah, an example of the new capabilities is the new boots on the ground, the new inspectors um, we've recruited just this week to deliver our occupation certificate audit program um, empowered under the RAB bill. Those people include engineers, architects, certifiers, with many years of practical experience on construction sites to help us be a more impactive and proactive regulator. So Matt, to wrap up the interview, um, it's also important for you to be out in the field um, and seeing the construction as it's playing out. Tell us what you're starting to experience. David, as you can see, I'm out in the field getting my boots dirty, speaking to the constructors that have really got to understand and implement the legislative reforms that we're pursuing under Pillar 1. But I'm also speaking to the 150 odd stakeholders we've brought on our consultation groups. These are the leaders of the industry um, representing the peak bodies and they're going to help us drive change as well. In summary, David, we've got to get the industry to understand the importance of producing trustworthy buildings. That's doing work based off regulated designs that are in compliance with the Australian Standards and Building Code of Australia. And if they don't appreciate that objective, well, they've got to understand that we'll have a regulator that's proactive and impactful, reinforcing the rules of the game. Ultimately, David, these are the changes that will rebuild confidence for consumers in the New South Wales construction industry. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, that was a very good share of the insights that you're uh, now delivering. And our next interview, we're going to speak to one of the regulators who's going to have the responsibility of leading these changes in the business of the regulator. Mm -hmm.